right, everyone, welcome to Finding Joy in Uncertain Times. Now, as you can see on the screen there, there is one shining red star, and that's why the joy is in red as well, that in uncertain times, like we're in at the moment, it is really hard to find the joy and the happiness. So today, I want you to be that shining light. I'm going to give you the tools so that you can be that one, and then you can have the ripple effect of turning all those blue stars into red stars, right? And those blue stars are people in your life. But what we'll find is you cannot be the joy for yourself until you love yourself and you are confident and happy with everything you're doing. And then you can be that positive influence on other people, all right? And that, that's what I really want to talk about today. Now, before we start, you can never, ever start any talking with just all talking. So I'd like everyone to stand up wherever you are. You might look a little bit silly looking at the screen, but we're going to play a little game. This is called one, two, three. All right. Now, when I say one, I'm going to go one, 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 one. Very good. All right. When I say two, I'm going to go, oh, don't know why that happened. Sorry. When I say two, I'm going to go two. Very good and nice work. Last one here. When I say three, I'm going to go three, two, one, one, one. All right. I think you've got it now. Let's get into some sequencing. All right. Albie, just in time to join this legend. All right. This time we're going to do two, then one. Okay. Two, then one. I'm going to say ready, set, and on go, we're going to do that. Okay. Ready, set, go. All right. Hopefully you got that. Nice work. Let's make it a little bit harder now. This time it's going to be three, then two. Okay. Three, then two. Ready, set, go. All right, hopefully you got that. Nice work. Now, the game's called one, two, three for a reason. We're going to do one, two, three. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Ready, set, go. All right, in the grand finale, hopefully you're ready for this. This is what we're doing now, okay, in Australia at the moment. The current premiers in the AFL are the Richmond Football Club. The postcode for Punt Road, their home ground is 3121, okay? 3121, 3121. Here we go. We're going to bring it home. Ready, set, go. Alrighty, guys, nice work. Hopefully, we have got all of that sorted and you are ready to rock and roll. The energy is here, and that is what we are trying to achieve at the moment. I want you to have, like this slide is going to say, I want you to have fun today. All right. My number one goal is I want to bring the fun back into uncertain times. When you have fun, that is when joy comes as well. All right. So, hopefully, that game has got the juices flowing, and now we are ready to rock and roll. All right, a little bit about me. My name is Dale Sybottom. I've been a teacher for my, well, my working life. Um, I've been very fortunate that I've been able to travel all over the world now presenting. Um, through my teaching skills, um, I've presented in over 25 countries for big corporates, schools, sports clubs, you name it. I work with anybody. And what I try and do is make learning and movement fun. And I'm going to show you that today and the power of play and things like that. All right. So um, a couple of those pictures there, uh, the one where I'm dressed in a really strange suit was a recent TED talk I did, which I'll talk about um, as well. And I'll show you that. Um, and the one in the middle there is one of my main passions. That's actually in Bali running a health and fitness retreat, um, doing that there as well. And why I've got that last picture there, the love heart, is because I want you to feel the love today, okay? I hope my energy, okay, comes through on the screen. And not only that, the big thing is I want you to find ways to love yourself today, all right? And that's going to be the big one because when you love yourself, you can love others and you can pass that on to everybody. And that is what we're going to do. So finding joy in uncertain times, okay? What I'm going to share today, I'm going to share a couple of different stories. And then I'm going to transform it all around and show you how that joy and happiness can go bang and you're going to just suck it through the screen and you're going to leave with that today. That is my number one goal for everybody. Now, 90% of all flights are normally on time, all right? And the reason for this, 
Some of them have minimal turbulence, course corrections, and they all get there in one piece, but 90% are nearly there on time. The reason for this is quite simple. All right, they are amazing. Pilots are always course correcting and their navigation systems are next level, okay? That is why 90% they're always on time. When course corrections are addressed immediately, all right, it's easier to manage, okay? Whereas if you don't you don't correct something straight away, we know what can happen. It can be catastrophic. Now, when course corrections are not addressed, as I just said there, it's like putting your hands over your face. It can be catastrophic, okay? Little things turn into big things. Now, I want to share a tale with you today, all right? And, and this is a New Zealand tale. Um, sorry for the Kiwi friends out there. I love New Zealand. Um, and if this brings up some bad memories, I'm sorry, but I think it's a really important story. In 1979, a passenger jet took off from NZ, Okay. There was 257 people on board, and they were going on this amazing trip, a sightseeing trip. So they weren't actually getting out. They were just going to fly from New Zealand, go to Antarctica, check it out, and then come back. It would be pretty cool to see. All right, and you wouldn't get cold because you're in the plane. So it sounds pretty awesome. And as you can imagine, everyone is high-fiving. They're getting around each other. They were amped and pumped for this adventure. I would be too because it sounds amazing. However, unaware to the flight coordinates, they were out by measly two degrees, all right? Now, if you think about 360 degrees, two degrees out, it doesn't sound like much. This put the flight out 28 miles east of where the pilots assumed they were going to be. Now, two degrees, when you let it go for a long period of time, 28 miles is a long way. Approaching Antarctica, the pilots descended. Right, to give the passengers a view of the brilliant landscapes. All right, they wanted to check everything out, and who wouldn't? Sadly, the incorrection coordinates had placed them directly in path of an active volcano, Mount Erbus. The snow on the volcano blended into the clouds, so everything was just white. This deceived the pilots into thinking they were flying above flat ground. Okay, they thought they were just going normal because everything looked the same. When the instrument sounded, dee, 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 warning, ground rising quickly, it was too late. Now, stay with me here. I promise today's talk is about joy and happiness, all right? There are some important takeaways from this story. Now, extremely sadly, the plane crashed into the volcano, killing everybody on board. An error of only two degrees. So think about that. Two degrees brought such enormous tragedy. Small things, if not corrected, will always become big things. Okay? Two degrees turn into 28 miles. Even seemingly small issues in our lives can create ripples, waves, tidal waves, tsunamis. All right, of consequences for better or worse. And I'm going to talk about that today. Like on the back of my top, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got kindness is a new call. I'm going to talk about the ripple effect of kindness, but also the catastrophic effects of not so positive actions or the way we treat ourselves. All right, the consequences can be huge. So this flight. All right, was a reflection of my own life and so many others. All right, and I think you can think about it a little bit now about how this may relate to you or different things going on. Now, I want to share my story with you. All right, now I'm just going to mute my mic and I've got a little video that goes for one minute here, and this really explains my life um, and exactly about how my coordinates were not right for the first 30 years of that. It took me hitting rock bottom to realize that I was chasing happiness and satisfaction in all the wrong areas. I was always on the chase, never satisfied with where I was, always needing that next big thing. But what really came out of it was I was selfish, arrogant, a narcissist, and really deep down, I was a fraud. My eye was off the ball, and before I knew it, I'd hit rock bottom, I was depressed and divorced at a young age. It took this crisis in my life to realize that living in the moment, being present and being grateful for everything that I had was essential to me. How did I do this? As a former teacher, I took my roots back to watching kids play and see the joy that it brought to their life. This insight alone paved the way for my own happiness and was the genius of Hooga Life, which in essence means to play. I now encourage adults to live the hooga life with me and adapt it into their daily routine, ultimately experience greater moments of happiness. This is now my mission in life. Join me on this experience. 
All righty. So getting back to the slides, as you can see, um, the first 30 years of my life, I had, I thought I was doing everything right, but I wasn't. Right, and at 30, I was homeless. I'd lost everything. I was always chasing the next big thing. I'll be happy when, I'll be happy when. I was never present. All right, and I want you to think back to the game we played at the start. One, two, three. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. That is a great way. That is called play based mindfulness because you were so present, it wasn't funny. You weren't thinking about anything else because you're like, what is Dale doing with his silly clapping? All right, and that was one thing I couldn't find. I was never present. I was always living in the future. And what ended up happening is I lost everything. All right, and I want to talk about today the last four years of my life because I am such a better person now. I've completely transformed that. I am happy. I'm enjoying it. And I'm going to share that with you all today. So I want you to ponder on this question. Like that flight, are there things in your life at the moment that you know are a little bit out? They're a couple of degrees out. Okay, are there things that you're not that happy with, but they just keep going and they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And this could be you personally, your health, your relationships, your work, all right? A couple little degrees out in all of these, it quickly adds up and I'm evidence of that, all right? That I didn't course correct. I wasn't like the navigation system. I let it go and a catastrophic thing happened. So before I do that, I want to give you some alarming stats and why today is so important for everybody watching to find the joy, all right? And not only that, the joy for yourself, but bring the joy into other people's life, that ripple effect, okay? We're going to talk about that. These stats are this year alone. One in seven primary school students will suffer some form of mental health. And that's probably going to be, and these are probably going to be on the rise with the une unexpected, everything that's going on. They're probably going to be higher than this. One in five adults will experience a mental health problem this year alone. So if you think about that, if you're in a workplace and there's 20 of you, that's just four, all right? And particularly the stresses and pressures that we're all going through at the moment, that is alarming. And this is a big one. In adolescence, one in four of them will suffer some form of mental health. And a lot of that is to do with stress and anxiety, of the unknown at the moment. That is alarming. And the big one is here is as adults, 63% of us know somebody at the moment suffering from some form of mental health issue. But the big one for me and the most alarming thing and, and why I do what I do and why I'm so passionate about what I'm going to deliver today is that the World Health Organization released a study that in 2030, the biggest killer in the world, okay, it's not going to be getting eaten by a shark, a plane crash, a car crash. It is going to be mental health, depression, suicide is predicted to be the number one killer in the world, all right? And we can do something about that. And it's starting with him. And then we're going to help others because that, that stat is shocking and I don't want that to happen. So that is why we're doing what we're doing today. Now, what I want you to do here, and this can be something if you take a screenshot of this or you write these down or whatever it is, I want you to ponder on these questions. There might be something you do after this webinar. How are you piloting your life at the moment? Okay. What feedback are you receiving to correct your course? Like I said, I wasn't doing any of this and Catastrophic things happened. I didn't die, but certain things in my life died. All right, and I'm a better person for it, but I could have stopped it if I had to realize what I was doing. How often do you check your guidance system? All right, like that plane, two degrees, turned out to 28 miles. How, how often are you checking that? Do you have a guidance system? I know some people may not. What is that guidance system? Is it people around you? Do you do regular checks? Is it journaling? Is it daily monitoring? What is your guidance system? I'm going to give you a few today. How can you minimize the turbulence and other core conditions distracting your path? Are there people in your life that are like turbulence that are making it so you can't course correct or do different things? All right. I want you to think of those. Okay. So they might be some questions that you come back to after this presentation today. Now, the big thing is here, remember, you are your number one asset, and that is what I want to show you today, all right? You cannot look after anybody else. You cannot give anyone your full attention, energy, love until you love yourself and you've got full energy for yourself, all right? Now, how can you find the joy? And that is what we're here today. I want to show you certain ways that you can do this. And at the end, I'm going to show you, I'm going to give it all the way for free, all right? Now, for me, as I said, there was one thing that I did in my life, and it was really reflect on what made me happy. The first thing I brought back was play, okay? Play like we were in that game at the start where you're clapping, a little bit of play every day because you look at kids, they're playing, they're happy, they're running around, they're in the moment. I call this play-based mindfulness. So once I had play, 
I added exercise. And when you can mix both of those together, it is magical. Now, I'm going to show you that today as well. Then the last two puzzle pieces to get my life back on track was gratitude. So just switching that mindset from things I don't have or things I can't control into what I do have and what I can control. All right, and, and that's a very simple thing to do. And the last one, like my shirt says here, giving, service, kindness, all right? Kindness is a new call. And I found by giving and being there for other people changed everything. So once I had those four puzzle pieces going on, my life completely changed. Now, I want to tell you the scientific evidence and research behind these of why we need those four in our days. Play improves our creative. Now, who doesn't want to be more creative? Let's be honest. But the big one there, it smashes anxiety. And when uncertain times are out here, anxiety and stress are at an all-time high. But as well as that, play is where you create your strongest social circles, okay? That is where you get to connect, socialize, bond. You figure out how to work with other people. And the big one is when you are in flow, like we were when we were clapping, that is mindfulness, play-based mindfulness. So play is crucial, all right? And what I find is the older we get, the less we play, okay? We need to go back to our roots as a kid. Find that in a child because they are loving life all the time. As well as that, exercise. When you get that in there, it smashes anxiety again, all right? You'll start to see some common things happening here. It improves our sleep. It improves our confidence as well. And let's be honest, who doesn't want more confidence? But the big thing is, it increases your energy, okay? And when you're not feeling so good, the more energy you can have, the better. The third one there is gratitude. And like I just said, switching that mindset, all right? Evidence is out there. It helps you live longer. Again, it increases your energy. But the last two here are the ones I want. It reduces stress, all right? In uncertain times, that's what we need, all right? And the big one there is it reduces depressive symptoms, all right? So if we're going back to the World Health Organization, that in 2030, the biggest killer in the world is going to be depression and suicide. Gratitude, play, and exercise can really help that. And the last one there, I've got this in a different chart, is because, again, this is where kindness and giving comes in. It'll boost your happiness, decrease your stress. But the big one for me is it'll get you that love drug, oxytocin, okay? When you do something good for somebody else and don't expect anything in return, you get the most amazing feeling ever, all right? So when you get those four together, it is incredible. And I'm going to show you today how you can do that. The first thing we have done, we've created a 30-day Sugar Life Happiness course. Now, Sugar means play in Spanish, so play life. And that is a brand that we are rolling today. He's running this online conference because we want you to feel what we have created, all right? And I know this will never be as good as one of our live seminars or one of our live talks, but you can still get the benefits and all the resources that I normally share, okay? Now, we have created a $297 course, all right? It's a 30-day happiness course. We normally don't give this away, but because it is uncertain times for all of 2020, we are going to give this away for free. And if you stick around to the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you the course code, all right? The code that you need to do when you click on that access now to get everything for free. Now, I'm going to show you why you need this, all right? What is inside, all right? There is a keynote explaining the breakdown of everything that happened in my life, not about the plane crash that I did today, but how everything unwailed, how I was always chasing things. We've then got a course on how important a morning routine is, finding your daily routine, all right, and as well as that, your evening routine, all right, and it's, that's ones that we've figured out from research and from testing, but now what we've done as well is we've got other people in there to do it too, all right, and then the big thing and why this course works so well we have created 30 play-based exercise games, all right? And why that's so important now is we need connection more so than ever. We need that human connection. And if we can't do it face-to-face, -face, then these courses are perfect because you can play them virtually. You can play them over Zoom. You can do different things like that. So each course, for example, Yahtzee here, all right, Yahtzee comes with the scorecard and instructions, and then also a blank copy. So you can play this by yourself, all right? 10 minutes a day, that is all it is, all right? You've got the scorecard, you've got the exercise one, but then if you don't want to do those movements, you can create your own Yahtzee game 
and play that with somebody else, all right? So that is incredible, all right? And as I said, I'm going to show you at the end where you can get all of these. Now, as well as that, in there, we've got this huge library of fitness movements and the movements in the game. You can see like that middle one there. You can try and do some donkey kicks like I am as well. But what this is, it is basically a one-step shop for you to improve all aspects of your life. And not only that, do it with people, all right? Incorporate people in your life while you do this and make it something that you work together as a team. So that is what's coming at the end. And that is mainly in that course. It does talk about the gratitude and the giving and so forth like that, but it is mainly around the play and exercise. Now, I'm going to give you that code at the end, but I want to show you other ways that you can incorporate those four things into each and every day. And that's the main thing that I want to get on today. And the big thing for me is I've got my peg here somewhere is that each day I want you to peg yourself, all right? And that means at the end of the day, you can grab a peg and this is amazing. Around the world, families, workplaces, schools, sports clubs, they've got their pegs hanging up. And at the end of the day, if they have played, if they have exercised, if they have done some form of gratitude and done some form of giving, you're allowed to get your peg and you stick your peg on yourself. It is a great reminder and very simple way to know that you are doing everything to bring the joy and happiness in your life. Now, I'm going to show you different ways you can tick that off each day so that you can achieve the peg. So as I mentioned before, you cannot do anything until you're happy with yourself. So if you're not, if you're struggling a little bit or you're not finding the joy at the moment, that is all right. Don't beat yourself up. What you can do is you can incorporate what I'm doing today, get your family involved, get your friends involved, make yourself happy and do it as a team. All right. As I said, socializing, human connection is number one thing to improve our moods. So the big thing is here, play, all right? Now, I want to talk about play today, um, and I'm also going to give you some people that you can go and check out after this, where I've done, I'm, a, I'm not a researcher, but i tell you what, I've done a lot of reading around the experts in play, and they are Brian Sutton Smith. He was like the godfather of play, okay? And then recently, it's been Dr. Stuart Brown, all right? And if you go onto um, YouTube and type in Dr. Stuart Brown TED Talk, it is a fascinating talk on the power of play. All right, that's one that you can do after it. Now, having fun and playing games, like we were at the start, we played that clapping game for three minutes. There was three minutes only, okay? That was it. And in that time, you become present, you're having fun, all right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you win or lose. These games aren't about winning or losing. It's what you feel during them. It is mindful. It is bringing you back. It is centering you. I want you to incorporate some form of fun in your day, okay? Go back to things like board games and stuff at home. Make sure you're doing some form of play every day. Now, as I said before, Dr. Oh, well, he was a doctor, but Brian Sutton Smith, he was like the godfather of play. And he feels that there are seven categories around play. And that's progress, fate, power, identity, imagination, self, and frivolity. All right. And they all come in there, and that's a breakdown for you. So that's what I'm saying. At the end, if you want to research and do a little bit more of this, then you can go and check those out. But what we have done with those seven aspects of play is we have created a set of daily mission cards. Now, a mission is where you get one thing to focus on for the day. And why we've done that is because with the seven different play types, as you will see on the board there, is that each colour, so the seven different I said there, represents one of the colours of the rainbow, and there are seven different missions for each one. Now, these are all in plastic and they're ready to go. Now, you don't need to go and buy these. If you do, I'll have a link at the end. But what I am going to say is you can use the ones on there all right, and I've just got a couple here from the deck that are pretty cool, all right? So one of the yellow ones, high fives. Today you're a challenge to give out 25 high fives to friends, family members, or strangers to make them smile. Now, that might be a bit hard if you're in lockdown, but eventually it won't be. And what it does, it gives you one thing to focus on for the day, okay, that you need to go and make 25 people smile, connect. That is awesome. Another one here, we've got one of our blue one. And this is Peak Achiever. Today your mission is... Anytime you see a log, bench, or stairs, to reach the top of the mountain and clap your hands 
high, like you're a peak achiever, like you've read the top. Again, it's just being mindful. It's making you realize each time you climb something, you see something, oh, I've got to do that tip. So you're in the moment, okay? And this last one, this is probably one of my favorite ones, the ninja. Sneaky, sneaky. Today your mission is to try and hide like a ninja and scare as many people as you possibly can. Keep a score, all right? And I, I absolutely love that. Um, you'll see other ones on there. There's like a playground one. There's a backwards winner, the one in the middle, the green one. Anytime you go through the door for a day, you need to do it backwards. So again, it is fun. It's having one thing to focus on. You can do it as a team. And then you'll see the rainbow magic card there. That is the 50th card in the deck. Um, and it is the best. Now, as well as that, in the copy, we've gamified it. And what we found with families and kids, and particularly adults, after doing these for a while, like, what's the point of this, all right? You tick this off, okay? And once you've ticked them all off, that's that gamified. You get rewarded for what you're doing, all right? So that is another way. You don't have to do those. There's five on the screen there you can test out. You can make your own. We have just created some that I wanted to show you today around the seven functions of play from Brian Sutton Smith. The next one I want to show you is jump, run, roll, swim, ride, whatever you want to, all right? You need to move your body, all right? Get those endorphins going, all right? I want to show you some different ways. And one of the things that uh, we've recently done is create a thing called the virtual PT, where we run online nightly free virtual boot camps, all right? And again, you can get the replays of these, but um, I'm going to show you when you get five of them straight up. And what they are, it is a fun-based fitness session because what I found was people get sick of just doing squats and sit-ups. Do 10, do 10. Whereas if you're playing a game, if it's a Monopoly game, if you're using Uno cards, if you're using a dice like this to tell you the reps, it makes it fun and you forget what you're doing. So we've got five sessions there. Each one are broken into four parts. There's a fun warm-up game, okay? A virtual one that you might do through the screen, like Paper, Scissors, Rock, or Red or Black, or different things like that. Then there are two games, all right? One's a solid one, one's always a fun one, and then we finish with a musical workout, all right? And I highly recommend you check those out. And where you can do that, if you just go onto YouTube and type in Dale Sidebottom, all right, there's up the top there, it hasn't been updated for a while, but there's five of these games. You can check them out, these workouts, as well as that there's so many other different play-based activities and musical workouts and things that you can do to have fun while you move your body. Because one thing I get is people say, I don't like moving my body. I find it boring. Yeah, and so do I. So let's make it game-based. Get those two things, play and movement together while you're doing it. The benefits are amazing, all right? And that's what you can do with those resources there. As well as that, I'm going to give you a link at the end. Um, I love learning through stories, all right? And that's why obviously I told the plane crash story at the start because it resonates, it hits home. So what we have done is we have created 12 story-based movement adventures, all right? Now, there is a narration and you've got to do a movement to get to the next part in the story. Now, some of the ones in there, one of them's old McDonald's got a fitness farm. So instead of a cow here and a cow there, it's a, with a squat, squat here and a squat, squat there. All right, and again, you can follow along. Other ones, there's an African safari. There's a tour de France. There's Alice in Wonderland, right? There's a sports adventure. They're all on there. I'm going to show you at the end where you can go and watch these. And they are having great effects around the world. And I love seeing this where people send me a video of, them doing it with their kids or their family or their students or as a workplace, doing one of these a day, all right? And again, that's a fun way to make a quick energy break, a brain break, whatever you're doing in your work life, your life, wherever you are, because they go from five minutes to 10 minutes and everybody's got that. If you can make it fun, that is the key. As well as that, we've got all these games plus 800 more at a site called thefitnessgamezone.com. It's basically like the Netflix and Stan of movement and adventure games and if you want to check that out let me know um i can send you a link to get a discount i'm not going to talk about that today we have now ticked off so we're getting close we're getting close to me and i put that peg on play and exercise the next one is gratitude okay now when i started doing gratitude i would simply journal every morning and just reflect on things and this was great but again it got a little bit boring right i got a little bit over it and again i need to make it a little bit more engaging. I need to find different ways so I actually forget what I'm doing, all right? So I've got a little challenge for you right now. I need everybody to pick a number between, uh, not between, either one, two, three, four, five, or six, okay? You've got your number, perfect. Now, that number represents a question on that morning card. So for example, if you had number four, 
When I woke up this morning, I was grateful for, all right? I want you, I'm going to have a little drink and a 30-second break. I want you to read the question that represents the number you chose. And in the text box here, I want you to type in what you were grateful for. And the reason being, the more gratitude we can see at the moment, it is amazing. And when you see other people reflect on the positive things in their life, it is incredible. So pick your number, all right? Write down your response. I'm going to have a quick, quick little drink, and I'm going to say what I did. I picked a random number as well, all right? So start typing those in there, and we can have a read of everyone's. It'll be amazing. All right, so while you type those in, I picked number five. So what is something I can do to make someone else's day better today? Well, that's probably an easy one for me today that uh, we're putting on this event um, to help people all around the world um, and this speak. So that's for me, that's quite easy. So we've got some other ones there. Um, grateful for access to this. Thanks, Jake. Um, having a great night's sleep. Grateful for my friends, uh, driveway. Grateful for everyone I meet. Love that. I'm grateful to have time to see and do this session. Thank you very much. When I woke up this morning, I was very grateful. Oh, that's gone a little bit quick for my run. Um, howling winds outside. Um, I'm very grateful that I can go to the shops as well. All right, so there's so many different things. And what this does, we normally, when we do this, Matt, grateful the peg, I love it. Start implementing it straight away. That's fantastic. Why this becomes fun is because you roll a dice, okay? You roll a dice and then you get your question. Whenever you add a dice into whatever you're doing, it makes it fun. It makes it engaging. You forget what you're doing, all right? And that is the key thing with this today. Now, thank you for those amazing responses on there. Um, listening, being present. I'm going to go back and read these at the end because this is what I love doing. I love seeing other people and what they're grateful for at the moment. The other thing we did, like I said before, is each morning I would write down three questions and then I'd do it at the end of the day. And when there's something in my life that I do, I, I get sick of journals, I turn it into an app. I love making apps and one of them is this Sugar Life app. Now, this is free. This is free on iTunes. It is free on Android. And thousands of adults and kids around the world are using this daily now. And it's quite incredible. Very simple with this app, okay? You get your thumb and you slide that play button to the AM side in the morning. And then this is the first thing you do in the morning when you get up or in the classroom or at work or wherever you are. And you answer three questions. What am I looking forward to today? So straight away, you focus on the positives, okay? You lock in the positive that you're going to have for the day. Second question is, what might I struggle with today? All right, and that's important to do because we need to identify how we're going to overcome this, okay? How am I going to make it so that is not an issue, all right? And then the last one, how can I do some form of kindness or service to make somebody's day better today, all right? It's always important to focus on one thing, all right? Then you go about your day. And at the end of the day or when you're in bed, you swipe that play button to the PM side and you answer three questions again. What are three things I'm grateful for or the biggest win I had today? Bang. What form of play did I do and how did it make me feel? And what did I learn today? Because every day is an opportunity to learn. So what this app does, it starts the day with a positive mindset and you go to sleep in a positive mindset as well. And it makes you accountable for the peg, okay? That is one thing there. As well on the app, it's got 15 different breathing exercises that last for 30 seconds to two minutes that are awesome for reducing stress and realigning any time, all right? And you check those out on there. So that is free, and I'll show you where you can get that at the end of today. Another one you can do, and I've seen this everywhere lately, is a gratitude wall, all right? Very simple. Once you do your sugar life questions, write down the things you're grateful for, all right, and you stick that on the wall. You do that again at night, and if you're by yourself, each time you walk past it, you get a reminder of the amazing things in your life, Okay. The next thing is, as well, if you do this through a family or a workplace, you see other people's. It's like the chat box there where everybody is sharing all the things they're grateful for. It is reassuring. It is nice. It's positive. We get to see it all the time. So a gratitude wall is an excellent way to express those amazing things that you are seeing at the moment. Another thing is a green dot. Now, this doesn't have to be a green dot. I got this from my good mate, Ash Manuel at Growing of Gratitude. He does in his workshops, he gives everybody a green dot and they go and stick it on something that they're grateful for, 
All right, now, for me personally looking around, that might be power, might be the computer, might be the internet cord that is allowing me to do this today. Then I stick it on and each time I go past it, it just reminds me how lucky we are to have these amazing things, all right, to live in a country like Australia. Even though it's windy and horrible outside and uncertainty is going on, we still have so many things to be grateful for. And seeing that green dot just reminds you of that, all right? So that's another thing that you can do there. From that... What I did is I created a daily challenge, and you'll see on there that there are 12 of these. So I would get, I've got a, my bag of dice here, I would get two dice each morning, and I would roll those two dice, and that would be my challenge for the day, all right? And a lot of these would come back because the third question in the Sugar Life app is, how can I have some form of giving or service or kindness to somebody else today? And that's normally what this would be. So I'd go about my day and I'd do it. Having the dice in there is fun. Now, you can take a screenshot of that, or you can create your own, okay? Very fun, simple way as a workplace to do it, in the classroom, as a family, all right, have two dice and roll them. Now, that is a really simple way to do that. Now, you can create your own, or we've done that for you. And the first deck of daily mission cards we created was a deck called the Kindness and Happiness deck. Now, in this deck, right, you have got 40 of our white and black kindness and happiness missions. But as well as that, these are the big ones, and we just did the morning card. But we've also got a gratitude card and an evening card. And these are having amazing effects around the world because they just sit on the table in the morning having breakfast. You can roll it by yourself or as a family, you roll the dice and you answer the question. You share it, all right? You go about your day and then in the evening, you do the same thing around dinner. So what it does, it creates discussion. It gets people talking. It is incredible. Now, you've got some on there. I'm going to share a couple with you today. So I really like this um, I think it's a bit of a bird. Find opportunities to give five compliments today. It costs nothing, takes no time, and could make somebody's entire day. Don't just say what you're thinking. Speak it out loud, all right? And that's an awesome one. I love the cow one here as well. Do a chore, task, or job for day today for somebody without them knowing, and I love that, okay? So that's probably one of my favorite. But this one as well, I think this will be more important in uncertain times. You've got the bug. Um, ask a friend to complete an empathy walk with you today where you take it in turns to walk. One is talking and one is listening. You get five minutes each to do both, all right? And isn't that nice? Empathy, to see through somebody else's eyes, okay? Um, again, these I'll show you at the end where you can get them. You can create your own, very simple. We have created them for you and it's probably a quick way of doing it. But again, as I said, you don't need that. You can make your own, all right? Start with something simple, use a dice, and I'll show you where their link is for all of those at the end. Now, the last thing... In all of that is kindness, giving, to get that peg, right? And I want you to practice this today. Recently, I was fortunate enough and to do a TED Talk, and um, my topic was narcissistic to nice. And when you sign up to get the free Sugar Life course, you'll see why I was a narcissist. I would put people down. I wasn't very nice. And people go, Dave, you weren't always like this. And to be honest, I wasn't. It might have been 2%. I'll tell you what I'm not now, though, because I course corrected and I fixed it. But one of the things in this TED Talk, and I'd highly recommend you watch this after you listen to me today or whenever it is, it goes for 15 minutes, all right? And one of the things I did in this talk is I wanted to reconnect with people in my life that I may have driven away when I wasn't the nicest person with put downs and, and just not nice actions toward them. So I wrote a list of 100 people in my life, friends, family, colleagues, everyone, and then each morning, once I've done my morning routine, which you'll see when you sign up for the Sugar Life course and you for free, that I would send one of these people a message and I would write, G'day, whoever, please don't feel like you have to write back, but I am proud of you because, and I'd write a paragraph, I admire you because, another paragraph, and I love you or I love something about you and I'd send it. Now, this would be the first thing that those people would get in the morning when they woke up. And it was amazing. Not only would... And make their day and make them say, I grow men ringing, crying me. People going, you're right. I said, yeah, I'm great. Let's do more of this. And then the ripple effect went off, okay? I was throwing out a kindness or happiness boomerang. It was hitting that person. And I was coming back with this huge hit of oxytocin, the love drug, all right? So what I want you to do right now, because I need another drink. I'm getting excited. I want you to grab your phone. I'm going to do it as well because I'm going to send one at the moment. I want you to pick somebody in your phone and just simply write them a one-sentence message saying, I'm proud of you because. That's it. 
or I admire you because, or I love you. One person, pick one person, that is it. I'm going to give you 30 seconds now. Grab your phone and write that text. I'm going to do it myself while I grab a drink. Bang, sent. All right, so I've sent one as well. I just told somebody while I was proud of them. You can do this as well. And I want to set you a challenge now to watch the TED Talk. It is really, really cool and share it with people because I think in uncertain times, a message is very, very important. It's so simple. So the Pell Challenge, proud, admire, love. Why do we wait for the right occasion to tell people this? Let's do it every single day. So a weekly challenge, I'm going to set you now. Monday. All right, I want you to phone someone and tell them why you're proud of them, why you admire them, why you love them. That might be a bit hard, so I'd recommend picking a family, friend, or member, or someone you're very close with. Tuesday, I want you to text someone. Like we just did there, you can do the full pal, proud and my love, or you can just pick one like we did then. Wednesday, send an email, and this might be to a colleague, a friend, anybody like that. Thursday is being a little bit vulnerable, a bit of Renee Brown, putting yourself out there on social media and sharing a pal message about somebody. But then Friday is my favorite, all right? A letter, card, or picture that you draw in the mail and post it. Let's be honest, in the mail, every time I go, it's junk mail or it's bills. How amazing. And I've got a list here of reply. I've got a big pile of them now of different pal messages I've received, and they make your day when you get them in the mail, okay? It is incredible. So I'm going to challenge you to do that. All right, that is your next daily challenge. But watch the TED Talk because it'll explain it a little bit more. Now, what have you loved from today? All right, I want the one idea in the chat box now, I want you to share maybe the one idea that you enjoyed a lot. All right, how, what's the one thing you can't wait to use? All right, so I'm going to um, have another drink and I want you to just share in there um, because this is great for me. Like everything in life, I need a course correct. What is what is working? What is helping people get the joy and happiness? All right. And that is what I need. So I'll go back through these afterwards. All right. So the idea of play every day, I completely agree. Play more, play. I love that. Play, faith, mindfulness. We love it. Everybody's typing in play. I think it's incredible. Find your inner child. Get that fire burning. Play. Course correction. Gratitude wall. Excellent. There's so many good things coming through there, guys. I can't wait to check all these out. That is awesome. Pick one and start with it. That is a big thing that I want you to focus on. Pick one and start focusing on it today. Now, key takeaways that I want to leave you with today. Your health and happiness are your own responsibility, all right, period. Nobody else, okay? All good things require dedication and hard work. What we just said there, it's not going to be easy, all right? But nothing in life worth pushing or striving for is easy, okay? This will take dedication and hard work. It's not something you can just do for a week and say, I'm going to be joyful and happy. This is a change. This is a way of life. It's not a fad diet, all right? You don't just do it for a week and then be done. It's like learning a new language or skill. You don't do it willy-nilly. You need to persist. You need to put the work in. You need to dedicate it, all right? I would recommend giving the peg a go for 10 days, as well as the pal. Pick 10 people, get the pal, all right? Start playing, play, exercise, gratitude, giving for 10 days. To fully thrive and find joy, like we're talking about today, thinking back to the start, be that red star in a sea of blue, all right? Every day we must take care of ourselves. That is it. You cannot look after anybody else until you put the work in for yourself. Energy is contagious. Hopefully you're feeling it through the screen today. So is happiness and kindness. And you'll know people in your life that make you feel happy and kind. Why don't you be one of those people? Be the ripple effect, okay? And the big one is here before I finish up and show you all the links of everything I spoke about. You only get one shot at this thing called life. Start putting things in today to make it the best possible one you can, okay? Don't look back in regret. You can change it today. 
Start implementing different things I've shown you today. Find ways to bring joy and happiness into your life. And we're going to live the sugar life way. And I'm going to show you how today. All right. So if you need to take a screenshot of those, paste them on the wall. All right. Because it's a great mantra to live by. All right. In my office here, if I could spin my computer around, I could show you I've got them on my wall because I constantly need to improve like we all do. And it comes down to number one. And he's on you, nobody else. So get a peg, all right? See that peg. Have it visible. At the end of the day, can you put it on and feel like you have done something to achieve that by doing the play, exercise, gratitude, and giving, okay? That is my challenge for you. So this is probably something you want to take a screenshot of, all right, or write down. So all the games... Um, that I've spoke about. They're all on a site called Fitness Gain Zone. I don't have a deal or anything. If you're interested in this, send me an email and I'll sort something out. The other things are the story-based adventures, all right? Like I said, Old McDonald Fitness Farm, the Tour de France, all these different things. If you go to energetic.education forward slash resources, they are all on there. You can stream those for free, no dramas, all right? If you want the Sugar Life app, go to sugar.life. All right, sugar.life is on the front page there. You can download the Android version or the iTunes version. The 30-day happiness course, all right? I'm going to give you, I haven't given you the code yet. I'm going to give you that in the next couple of slides. But for that, you go to Sugar Life, up the top, click on courses, and there's a 30-day happiness course. This is my life's work, and I want you to use it because I know the benefits. For our daily mission cards, all right, all of those, if you wanted to check those out at Sugar Life forward slash mission cards. And the big one, if you could be so kind after this, watch my TED Talk, the Pell message, share it with people. I just want people being kind and sharing and telling this thing. I want to make a huge ripple effect. I don't want to just have a ripple in a puddle. I want to have a tsunami wave of kindness going everywhere. All right. So if you just go onto YouTube and type in Dale Simon, TED Talk with Dale Simon, Narcissus is nice. You can check that out. So make sure you have written those down and you've got those because I want you using those resources, all the free ones I've mentioned. So the free course and look at the code word. So when you go to that course, all right, the code word is kindness. All right. In capital letters, kindness. I'm being kind to you because I want you to be kind to yourself. I want you to incorporate other people and I want you to let me know. I'm going to show you my socials. Let me know how this is going for you, how the pal's going for you, everything like that. So when you go to get this course, you get it for free. $297, lifetime done for free. Use the code word kindness. For all of 2020, you can get that because I want to help people out in these uncertain times. And my favorite saying, and this will be on the TED Talk. I'm sorry, I'm spoiling a little bit. People often say the motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. That's why I recommend it daily. All right, you wash every day. I know I've had a shower today. I smell great. I'm ready to go. Okay, we take time to groom, to wash, to do these things. We need to do it with our health, happiness, and joy. Invest time in yourself, it is crucial. Now, if anybody's got any questions, please feel free to type those in the box now. Um, Why you do that, I'm just going to bring this up here where you can contact me. Now, if you are watching the replay of this, my personal email, and please contact me anytime with any questions or any feedback, is dale at energetic.education. All right, check that out. My YouTube channel, like I said before, just go on YouTube and type in Dale Cyberdom. That is my channel. Also, I run a podcast, weekly podcast. I think we're up to, well, there's nearly 200 episodes now. Just go to Energetic Radio. We interview, I interview people that inspire me sports stars, educators, athletes authors, you name it, anybody doing something great, I want to learn from them. Um, And the best way to contact me is probably through Instagram. If you go on there, type in at Dale Sidebottom, all one word, and let me know how today went, all right? Let me know what was something you loved. I'm going to go through the comments, but I would love to know different things that you loved about everything I have done today. All right, so does anybody have any questions? If you type them in the box, otherwise send me an email. Thank you for watching this session from EPEW 2020. We're saving the next few minutes for you to ask those final questions before we log off. If you have any questions afterwards, please reach out to the presenter or send a message to EPEW through our website. Don't forget that we have more amazing sessions going on. Head over to our website, epew-cp.weebly.com.
and look for the virtual EPEW 2020 tab. You can also access the presentations on YouTube by typing in the hashtag EPEW 2020. We'd like to thank the amazing EPEW committee for all their hard work over this past year. This event would not have been possible without their dedication, commitment, and volunteering their time to providing high-quality professional development. Don't forget about our other events like our socials and share times. Links can be found on our website. Remember our motto for EPEW, come to learn, leave as family. Thank you for joining our family today.